So before we dive into the server discussion, there's a few key terms that I want to go over to make sure that we're all on the same page with different aspects of, of a server. So the first is a web server. And you know, you've probably heard, there's a number of web servers you've probably heard of. Nginx is one of them, Apache, Tomcat. And what a web server is, is it's, it's an application that's running on your server that clients connect to and that fulfills requests. So for example, if you're using Chrome and you, you know, visit a web page, your browser is going to talk to their web server and the web server is going to fulfill requests. So you may be send a request for index.html, the web server is going to process that request and send that data to your browser, which is displayed to you. So the web server is sort of the front line between clients out in the, anywhere in the world and your server. So behind the web server, or in conjunction with the web server, we have this idea of a web application slash framework. And what this is, is it's a program that's running on your server that works with the web server when it's processing requests. So for example, when you go to a website, maybe that stores links that you may save in the, in the, in the cloud, their site is running a web server which processes, processes your request, but in order to get that customized experience that you have when you log in and you see all your links, you're going to be interacting with a web application and a framework. So popular web applications and frameworks include things like Django, you might have heard of Django, or Ruby on Rails is another one. Um, JSP, Java Server Pages, is another framework. So these, these are applications that sit on top of the web server, and what happens is the web server receives this request, it passes off that request to the framework, and the framework is going to execute your business logic to fill that request. So maybe the business logic could be executing as it reads your user ID, it pulls data out of a database, it then uses that data from the database to create HTML, and then it hands that response back off to the web server, which sends it back to the client. So the next, the next key term we want to be aware of are databases. So popular databases include MySQL, PostgreSQL, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle SQL, there's, there's hundreds of them. Um, and we have different types of databases. We have relational databases, which is like the ones I just mentioned. And we also have some other types like NoSQL you might have heard, so like MongoDB. And so there's, there's many different ways to store the data, but in most cases, databases are going to be used to persist data. The reason being that by default, web connections, HTTP connections, are stateless, meaning there's no, nothing's carried over for the most part. Now, we have some exceptions to that with cookies and things like that, but for the most part, they're stateless. So database is going to give us a way to persist this data and the important thing is that that's in a central location that different services, we'll talk about services, can access that. So next we have uh, HTTP and WebSockets. So these are two different types of protocols for transferring data between a server and a client. So we'll start with HTTP because that's sort of the overarching uh, idea. And an HTTP request defines different um, different ways of communicating or different verbs that are used and interpreted by servers. But the, the main thing to, to take away from HTTP is that you make a request and you get a response. So there's, it's, it's one transaction. Now browsers can optimize that where if you're making lots of requests, they won't like close and open the connections over and over because that's, there's some overhead involved in that. But an HTTP Request and response is like one transaction. And so you send a request, you get a response, and that's it. Pick up the phone, send, receive, hang up in, in, in the naive form. So on contrast, we have WebSockets. And WebSockets gives us a state to our transaction. All right. So WebSocket connection starts out as an HTTP request. 
So you, you pick up the phone, you make the call, you make your request, but you send along some additional data along with that request that the server then interprets and doesn't hang up. So you include some header information, the server reads these headers, and instead of like sending a response and hanging up, it will keep that connection open. And what this allows you to do is to have bi-directional communication, much like you know a typical socket connection that you may be familiar with from other programming languages. And the advantage of this is that once you've made that connection, there's very little to no overhead of sending data back and forth to the server. We don't have to you know, recall the server every time we want to send data. And it, it's bi-directional. So we can, we can send, send, send. We can receive, receive, receive. We don't have to have that send, receive uh, paradigm. Uh, the next topic that we're going to want to be familiar with is REST. And REST is a, it's an idea that's built on top of HTTP. So the idea behind REST is that we agree on certain conventions of sending messages over HTTP that allow us to expose data in a generic form. So we talked a little bit about this previously, but the idea is that all the, all the, all the communication is done in a, in a platform agnostic way. So that if you're using C++ and I'm using C Sharp, we can communicate via REST in a way that doesn't require us to agree on a certain protocol or anything. REST is, is that protocol, and pretty much any programming language can, has a library to easily make and receive REST calls. So the idea behind REST is we have a certain number of verbs that describe what, what this request is trying to do. So we have a get request, which is to get data. We have a post request, which is to send data. And we have a put request, which can modify data. And then we have a delete request, which is to delete data. And this is a way for us to organize our requests to what we call endpoints so that things happen in a logical way. So if we have, for example, maybe a list of models, we can make a get request to the models to receive them. We can make a put request to modify one. We can make a post request to create a new model, or we can make a delete request to delete a model. So that's, that's REST in a nutshell. And the final thing we want to talk about is the idea of ports and the idea of a proxy and non-standard ports. So by default, when you're working on the web, most things are going over what we call trusted ports. And the reason for this is that we, can, we don't want to expose our machines to malicious activities, and we basically wall off everything except a few ports. Um, namely, HTTP uses 80, and HTTPS uses 443. So ideally, we want all our communication to happen over those ports. Um, the reason being that in a lot of network setups, in corporate setups, that the network administrators will wall off non-standard ports because they don't trust applications to, to use them. And it's just more, more vectors of attack uh, that people can be hit by. So we're going to talk about using a proxy to handle uh, multiple connections over, over the same port and how we funnel that traffic to our supporting processes.